Have you ever felt overwhelmed by the multitude of Docker CLI commands? Have you ever been confused about what's actually happening with your Docker containers? If you have, don't worry because you are not alone. How a container behaves depends on which state it is in. Luckily, once you understand how a container works based on its life cycle state, you will be way more confident with Docker. It will also be much easier for you to switch to more advanced container management solutions like Docker Compose, Docker Swarm, Kubernetes, etc. So let's learn about the container lifecycle once and for all. In this video, we'll firstly learn about the different states a container can be in. We'll also learn how to manage them using the Docker CLI. We will clear some common confusions regarding differences between Docker pause and Docker stop, as well as the differences between Docker stop and Docker kill. And we'll also discuss POSIX signals. If you haven't watched the first two videos of the Docker Made Easy series, I recommend you watch them before continuing with this one. Find the links in the description below. Alright, let's start by looking at the container lifecycle. This is a simplified version of the container lifecycle. The circles in the diagram represent the states a container can be in. They determine how a container behaves. Accompanying the states, we have the arrows, which represent how you can transition from one state to another. The texts in the arrows represent the relevant Docker commands. Before we dive into the states of a container, we need to know a tiny bit about POSIX signals. Operating systems today handle large number of processes. Signals are simply just the standard way that the operating system tells a child process how to behave. There are several signals, each having different purposes. But for us, we'll just be focusing on two. SIG term. This is the signal that is sent to a process to request its termination. It can be caught and interpreted or it can be ignored by the process. This allows the process to perform graceful termination, releasing resources and saving state if required. SIG kill. This signal is sent to a process to cause it to terminate immediately. Unlike SIG term, this signal cannot be caught or ignored and the receiving process cannot perform any cleanup upon receiving this signal. SIG term is usually preferred over SIG kill since it provides a chance for graceful or safe termination of a process. If you are interested to learn more about signals, you'll find links in the description below. Okay, we are now ready to discuss about the states of the container lifecycle. The created state. This is the first state of the container lifecycle, which comes right after acquiring or building an image. Watch the last video if you want to know more about how images work. We can easily create a new container using the docker create command. 
when the dr creed command is run a thin writable layer is created over the specified image and is prepared to run the main process of course on this state the container is just created but is not started yet here is an example of creating a container using the nginx alpine image and naming it app1 the id of the new container is printed if successfully created the running state as the name suggests this is the state when the container is actively running meaning that the main process has started execution for a container that is created or stopped it can be started using the docker start command if you don't want to explicitly create and then start a container every time you can do both steps at once using the docker run command here's an example the command above creates and starts a container named app2 in the background the paused state a running container can be paused using the docker pause command this has the effect of suspending or freezing all the processes in the specified container a container that is paused is unaware that it has been paused when paused the state of the container stays intact both the disk portion and the memory portion so if we wanted to pause app1 if it was currently running we would simply run this Similarly to get a paused container back to running with we'll use unpause the stop state a container that is stopped does it have its main process actively running when stopped the disk portion of the state of the container is persisted but unlike when paused the memory portion of the state is cleared when a container is stopped this is the main difference between the paused and the stopped states a container can be stopped in four primary ways one using the docker stop command two using the docker kill command three when the main container process has exited or completed and four when out of memory exception is encountered let's discuss each of them individually to stop a container using docker stop you simply run something like this when executed the main container process receives a sig term signal by default and after a grace period it receives the sig kill signal the docker kill command is very similar you run something like this when executed the sig kill signal is directly sent to the main container process by default this means The difference between the docker stop and the docker kill command is that by default the stop can allow safe termination within the grace period while docker kill terminates the container immediately For this reason stop is preferred over kill If you are confused review the section where we discuss about posit signals It's important to note that the docker kill command can also be used to issue any signal to the container process using the signal argument not just sig kill Here's an example of issuing the sig end signal
a container can also stop automatically if its main process has completed or exited. This can happen if the main process either runs into an exception or interrupt or it can happen if the task completes after a certain point in time instead of running in an infinite loop like a server. Here's a very basic example. We are running the Alpine image and we are specifying the main command to run within the container which is simply echoing hi. The container simply runs this hi command, prints the hi command to the console and exits immediately after the command is completed. Out of memory exception, if your containers attempt to use more memory than the system has available, then you may face out of memory exception. As a result, some containers or even the Docker daemon might be killed by the kernel. Therefore, you should always ensure that your application runs on hosts with adequate memory in production. The simplest way of managing memory is by limiting the maximum amount of memory a container can use by using the hyphen m command. This command runs a container using the Redis Alpine image using a memory limit of 50 megabytes. If you want to learn more about managing memory and mitigating risks associated with out of memory exceptions, then refer to the links in the description below. The deleted state. A container that is on the created or stopped state can be removed using the Docker rm command. This will result in the removal of all data associated with the container, like the processes, the file system, the volume mappings, etc. For example, if app1 is stopped, you can remove it simply like this. If, however, the container is running or paused, and you attempt to remove it with the docker rm command, you will get an error from the daemon saying that the container needs to be stopped. If you are sure that your running container doesn't have any associated data which needs proper cleanup, then you can perform force removal using the hyphen f option. But it is recommended not to do this, especially if the data integrity of the container is important and you want to use the same container in the future. Advanced Container Lifecycle Here is a detailed view of the container lifecycle we just discussed. This includes events in the rectangles and conditionals in the diamonds. This should be much easier to understand if you have gone through the previous sections. Or do you think I should have started with this diagram instead of the simplified one? What do you think? Today, we learned about the different states our container can be in, the container lifecycle, as well as the docker cli commands to maneuver through those states. Once you know the basics of containers, you can do much more powerful stuff and move on to more advanced tools like docker compose, docker swarm, kubernetes, etc. Containers are awesome and we are just getting started. On the next episode, we will discuss about how volumes work on docker. Till then, be bold and keep learning. Most importantly, take care.